It was a beautiful day. The birds were singing, the sun was shining, and I was prepared to be blessed by James Cameron. I walked into the theater with a smile on my face, ready to be transported to a new world. But when I walked out, there was nothing but total despair. So what happened? Well, before I get to that, let's start with the one major positive I have, the CGI. The CGI in this movie is incredible. The water is sublime. I just wanted to jump into that water the whole movie and start swimming. Now, personally, I think beauty and the literal quality of the CGI are two different things. To me, the first Avatar did some more interesting things with the visuals, but that's just me. Either way, the quality here is undeniable. Pretty much just goes to show what can happen when animators aren't treated like garbage. That's pretty much my one major positive. Everything else would be a footnote, and since I know why the majority of you clicked this video, I suppose I should just get to the point. But first, let's have a little talk about these things called opinions. Opinion. Noun. A view or judgment formed about something not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. I do not claim to be a professional film critic or the arbiter of any objective truth. You don't have to put any weight into my opinion and my opinions should not affect your feelings. You shouldn't feel upset because I didn't like something that you liked. Keep in mind that even if I don't say in my opinion before every sentence, that doesn't mean it still wasn't my opinion. Cereal with water is better than cereal with milk. Not so bad now, was it? With all that out of the way, my major con is... I did not like the story of Avatar 2. Like, at all. I didn't like Stephen Lang. I didn't like Spider. I didn't like when Jake's kids got in a fight with some other kids. I didn't like this whale. I didn't like this story at all. For starters, Stephen Lang's character in Avatar 1 was one of the least interesting aspects of that film, so I don't really know why he was so important that he had to be the villain of this movie also. They apparently implanted an avatar with all of his memories before he died, even though this was never mentioned or elaborated on in the first movie. It feels super cheesy and tacked on. Stephen Lang also apparently has a kid. This is something that was never even hinted at in Avatar 1 either, by the way. So did Sigourney Weaver, actually, now that I think about it. Everybody was shitting out babies in Avatar 1, apparently, despite that never being brought up. Anyways, his kid is played by one of the worst actors I've ever seen in my life, and he plays a key role in the movie because Avatar Stephen Lang kidnaps him and uses him to locate Jake by getting on his good side. This ends up working, and in the end, his son is the one who saves his life and leaves this movie on a cliffhanger of sorts. I find this really dumb too, because how am I supposed to believe that he would so quickly be swayed to support his father when he has been raised by Navi his whole life? You can't even argue it's because of some intangible blood relation or anything, because it's not even his blood that's related to this version of Stephen Lang. Anyways, Jake's son takes his family to some water clan because Stephen Lang knows where they are. His sons get pulled into a weird teen drama subplot thing where they fight each other and it's all really cliche. Also, the son of the leader of the water clan tries to straight up kill Jake's son and this is just brushed over. He just apologizes for trying to kill him and then they become friends. Like, don't you think that attempted murder would be a bigger issue than it's made to be in this movie? There is also a subplot with Jake's son and this big ass whale. That's also extremely cliche and boring. Like the whale he befriends was a bad whale who supposedly killed a bunch of the water people, but it turned out that it was one big misunderstanding. Eventually, Stephen Lang finds out where Jake is and there's a big battle, blah blah blah. Titanic happens at the end. That was actually kind of cool to be honest. Spider saves his dad before he dies without telling Jake and his family, so yay I guess, Stephen Lang for Avatar 3. Ultimately, I just found this story to not only be extremely predictable, but also disrespectful to the audience and just really tacked on. It doesn't really feel like a sequel that was planned out to me. If you liked the movie, hey, good for you. I just didn't really like the story at all and I was literally dying of boredom in the theater, so uh, I don't really know how to end videos, so... <laughs>